Good afternoon. Nice to meet you all. So today I'd like to start by telling you a little story of mine. Since I was young, I had a very bad habit. A bad habit of comparing myself to others. I compared myself to my sister. She seemed to be better than me in every aspect. I compared myself to celebrities. Their beauty, wow, it made me feel so ugly. I compared myself to my friends. They seemed to be more popular than I was. Although I've always did this, sometimes consciously and sometimes not, I wasn't aware of its destructive effects, how it killed my self-esteem and made me feel like I'm not a worthy person. It was one day last year. It wasn't one fine day. Because I was back from school and I was crying. My teachers, who also have taught my sister, has compared me, has scolded me for not being as good she is, and told me to get good results like her. It really stinks here to hear those things. So I came back home and I cried for a long time. And after crying a lot, I asked this question to myself. Why am I even doing this to myself? Comparing myself to others has never had a positive impact on me. It always made me feel so miserable and it was basically like hurting myself, like slitting my own wrists. So that day, I decided, I decided to put an end to it, to stop what I have been doing, to say goodbye to my bad habit. Even though I decided to stop, I still see a lot of people still comparing themselves to others, including my friends. And I think people of my age are especially vulnerable to these negative thoughts because we are going through that phase of life where we are not certain who we are and everyone else seems to be better than us in some way. But even as a joke, I really hate hearing these things because I know how it eats away your pride and your trust to yourself, as if it's a poison. So today, right now, I feel really nervous. I hope my voice is not trembling, and my legs not shaking, please listen to me. <laughs> but I'm standing in front of you because I want to tell you something, to stop comparing yourself to others. I think we compare ourselves to others because this fellow right here, our brains, often forget how important, how special, and how precious we all are. So today, I'd like to tell you how unique we all are by explaining to you what defines us. Our human body is made up of millions and billions of cells, something you see here before, here. And within that cell, there is something called the nucleus. And in that nucleus, there's an X-shaped structure called a chromosome. This chromosome is made up of thread-like substance called a chromatid. And within that chromatid, there's the DNA. The DNA is made up of different arrangement of codes. And this codes defines who we are. Now you want to ask me, 
by how does that make us special? That's because this code defines who we are, just like a product code. And no one has the same arrangement of codes as you do. From the appearance of human being on this earth until the present day of 15th of February 2015, no one has ever had the same arrangement of codes as you do. And even after we die, even if hundreds and thousands of years pass by, still there won't be anyone who has the same arrangement of codes as you do. You are one and only. I hope that has given you a brief idea on how unique and how special you are. Now, have you ever conducted a science experiment during your high school days? Do you still remember what is one of the most important factors when you are comparing the results of two experiments? I remember that the most important thing is that the key conditions of the experiment should be kept the same. For example, the number of oscillations in physics experiment, the plant species in a biology experiment, the length of the time you hit a chemical in a chemistry experiment, they all should be kept the same. If not, then your comparison would be wrong. And I'm sure my teacher would give me a zero for that. By now, you would be wondering, why is this girl even talking about science experiments and all? She must be crazy. But I'm not crazy. And the reason why I'm telling you about this science experiments is because I want to tell you that we all are like science experiments. What's more, completely different science experiments. Just now I have told you how we all differ biologically. But that's not all. Between you and me, there's a great barrier for us to be the same individuals. We don't have the same parents or siblings. We don't have the same nationality or culture. We don't have the same hobbies or interests. We don't have, we didn't receive the same upbringing or education. We don't share the same dreams. That's why comparing you to me and comparing ourselves to others is like conducting a wrong science experiment, one your teacher would give a zero for. Behind the act of comparing yourself to others, there's an ugly yearning hiding beneath it, a wish that you are same as that person you are comparing yourself to. However, have you ever wondered how boring and dull the earth would be if everyone and everything were just the same? For example, if Mount Everest were everywhere, even at the back of your house, and Mount Everest would no longer be the Mount Everest we know. If the great pyramid of Giza were everywhere, and you would feel nothing more than looking at your neighbor's house when you are looking at the great pyramid of Giza. In movies or books that show the dark future of humanity, people are often forced to suppress their individuality. For instance, they are called by numbers instead of their names. And if we persist to compare ourselves to others and wish that we all are same and perfect like robots are, is there any guarantee that this dystopia would not be our future? I don't think so. 
And yet, there is another reason why we should not compare ourselves to others. That's because we all have different strengths and talents. Our talents might not be valued by the world, and someone else, theirs might be. But that doesn't mean that our talents are less important than theirs. This is a storybook I've read when I was really young. There's a story titled here, Which Flower is the Prettiest in the World? And as a curious child, I was dying to know the answer. So I went to my mom and I asked her, Mommy, which flower is the prettiest in this world? And I half expected my mom to tell me that the rose is the prettiest and the pumpkin flower the ugliest. Here's a picture of the pumpkin flower. In my country, the pumpkin flower is the archetype of an ugly flower because it's all wrinkly and all as you see. But the answer my mom gave me was which flower is the prettiest if they are all beautiful in their own ways? And I couldn't agree more with my mom on this. Some people, they might be roses. They're beautiful and they seem to be good in everything they do. And perhaps you or me, we might be pumpkin flowers. But that doesn't mean that we are less important than they are. The rose makes people happy with its beauty and its scent. And giving your girlfriend a rose is more likely to make her happier than giving her a pumpkin flower. But on the other hand, the pumpkin flower has its own ability to bear pumpkins. <laughs> and if you were really starving to death, I think I would prefer to eat a pumpkin than, rather than eating a rose that gives you diarrhea. <laughs> so why are we chasing for others' talents if we have our own? Isn't that ironic? Isn't that same as having a stack of cash or gold in your safety deposit box and forgetting about it and going around chasing for others' money? Before I end my talk today, I would like to tell you something. Something I didn't know a year before. If you don't like how things are, then change it. You are not a tree. Ruby, hello. <laughs> That's a quote by American entrepreneur Jim Rohn. And it's one of my favorite quotes because I think rather than comparing yourself to others, it's better to try hard, try your best to change something. At the end of the day, you won't be as you might not be as great as that person you are comparing yourself to. But the fact that you tried still remains. And what's more, you would still be better than from where you have started. Now, today I have told you a message that no one, even you yourself, has the right to compare you to others. But that was also a message to me. Something I wish that I had known a year ago, something I wish that somebody had told me a year ago. So I wish if today there is anyone out there who's still comparing themselves to others, I hope my talk has meant something to him or her. Thank you very much.